Hey everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Numbers. This is the program where we dig deeper to understand what really matters most in business. Big shout out and thank you to everyone watching and listening, especially to those folks who are tuning in internationally. Really appreciate your support. Your brand is your identity, whether it's your personal brand or if it's your corporate brand. And today we're gonna to be talking about scaling your brand and aligning it with your mission. And I'm pleased to welcome my guest, Emily Sikorsi, who is the co-founder and CEO of Root & River. Emily, welcome to Behind the Numbers. Thank you, Dave. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, thanks for getting up early. I know you're all the way out in Arizona, so thanks for uh, for hitting the uh, the alarm early this morning. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about who you are and a little bit about Root and River? Absolutely. Thank you. So Root and River, we believe every great brand is a spiritual experience, and we're an intrinsic branding practice that partners with defiant leaders to help them uncover and articulate the true soulful. Um, meaning of their brand and then to put it into everyday language brands are born in conversation so we help them mold that language and then use it every single day in their work so that can be a corporate brand it can be an individual brand um, we're so proud to partner with people who are really mission driven yeah there's a lot to unpack there and i'm, I'm glad we've got uh, a lot of time to do that here let's start with really defining what a brand is and i think a lot of folks understand that a brand is more than a logo, but what's your perspective? Right, so we define brand is how other people experience what you believe. So it's, it's, it's different than most people conceive of, but brands are really rooted in what we call the soil of soul. They're rooted in our beliefs and in our passions and in our past disappointment. All of these things that lie beneath the surface of the ground that really inform what we do in our life and in our work. And so brands are how other people get to experience or live or have a sense of those things that are that are coming from, from the soil of soul. And so it is really an experience and it is really rooted in something very deep, not just your set of colors or your logo or mark. Yeah, far too many people get stuck on the color and uh, the, the font and all that good yeah. stuff. But talk a little bit more. Let's, let's dive into this belief system. How, how do you help folks identify them and then even next step articulate them? Yes, absolutely. So the way that you really can identify and, and, and speak to and speak of these beliefs every day is to begin by taking an inward journey. So we believe branding is really about looking inward. In the 20th century, branding was really about an external process. It was about trying to figure out what the market wanted to hear and maybe construct some sort of an image or a Betty Crocker or a Marlboro man that was a manufactured reality. And then manipulating people through what we call blunt force trauma marketing to try to believe that they needed to purchase this ideal. But the problem was that the ideal was not was just an ideal. It was not true. It was not based on anything real. And in, in many cases, a lot of the products that were being sold actually contributed to disease and death. So in the 21st century and in the post-pandemic world, you cannot do that anymore. Your brand has to be in alignment with what you believe. So you begin this inner journey. Your brand is not what other people want to hear. It's what is resting on your heart to say. And so we begin by looking to the core elements of who you are. So some questions that we like to ask our clients is, what have you always known to be true that no one ever taught you? So it comes from a place of deep knowing and is inherent to who you are. Another one that we ask our clients is, maybe there was something as a child that you got in trouble for, a young child, perhaps below the age of five. And at the time you were not really sure, why am I, why am I in trouble for this? And if, if that's the case, you probably stumble onto a core belief that has informed the way that you live and are in the world. So those are just two of the introspective questions that we use to ask, or that we ask our clients to get them to be thinking on a deeper level. I mean, it's, it's these days, it's not that unusual to do values work or um, core beliefs work, but oftentimes people stop before they get to that deeper level. And that's really where the alignment that comes can come from. Once you're in alignment from that belief level and you're living out your brand every day, people have that amazing experience that's unforgettable and remarkable. Yeah, so this is a business show and a lot of the folks that watch and listen are in, we'll call it the business ecosystem, right? So think accountants, attorneys, yeah, 
investment bankers, things like that. When, when you and I talked in our prep call, uh, I made a, a, I guess really we'll call it a joke about how like financial services and accounting and so forth packages themselves and how they try to differentiate. In your experience, having worked with these organizations, what, what might you share with, with that segment of the audience as to how they can drill into this and not consider it to be something that's you know woo woo and only for maybe a technology based company? Right, and we work with a lot of financial services companies and we work with manufacturing, we work in every sector. And this is this practice helps to differentiate you. It's an incredibly noisy market, Dave, as you know. It is near, I would say, practically impossible to differentiate your brand based on your services or your products anymore. Look, nobody has to buy anything from anyone and anyone can buy anything from anybody. The world has opened up. Um, and so we can only differentiate based on who we are and what we, we believe. Those are actually the only things that make you distinct and stand out. So instead of saying, this is our great product and we're gonna serve you the first class uh, client care, it's all been said before. What we have to do in order to frack into the mind of the audience is to appeal to the place where we make decisions in our brain, which is the emotional and the visual center of our brain. And in order to do that, we must craft messages that are emotional and that are unexpected. And so when you are able to do that and you appeal to that brain, um, those decisions are made in less time than it takes you to blink your eyes. And then the left brain gets involved in justifying that decision. So unless we are able to differentiate by who we are, why we were formed, what we are here to achieve in the world, we're just going to appear like any other financial services company. And it's, it's really, major advantage to be able to differentiate in a way that is belief-based or mission-based. Yeah. Emily, for those who are watching and listening and want to learn more about you or your company, how can they contact you? Well, I would invite them to visit rootandriver.com is our website. Um, we have a blog there and so many opportunities for you to learn more about what we call intrinsic branding. Um, we also have a book out uh, that published earlier this year called Rooting Up, Essays on Modern Branding. And you you can get that on Amazon as well. Great. We only have a few minutes left in this first segment. Uh, time really does go fast here. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen you say in, in, in different speaking engagements that you've done that every brand is a movement. Talk about that if you would, please. Yes, absolutely. So the most, I would say, world shifting movements of our time have been begun by people who are reticent to begin the movement, people who are called to start movements are always questioning, why me? You look at Gandhi, you look at Martin Luther King Jr. Those are all people who wrestled with the idea of having this larger purpose. But every brand is also a mission. It is no longer here, buy this, use that blunt force trauma to manipulate people. It is, this is who we are in the world. This is what we believe, join us. And you see brands like Nike, you see brands like Southwest Airlines, you see brands like Nextdoor putting their mission out there World and inviting people to participate in the mission. And that's really basically the same tenets of a movement. This is what we stand for. Here's how we're going to activate. Please come join us. And that is really the most powerful way that people can participate in the brand and become raving fans and followers, people who are going to share and spread that brand for you. Great. I think we're going to take a quick commercial break right here. This is a good natural spot. So folks in the back, we're going to pause. Emily, don't go anywhere. You watching and listening. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this quick break. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. One in eight women will be diagnosed within their lifetime. RVN TV is asking for your support for breast cancer survivors and those currently battling the disease. You can do this by wearing pink ribbons or clothing throughout the month of October. Early detection and treatment is crucial, and we at RVN TV encourage all women to consider undergoing breast clinical exams and mammograms. The fight against breast cancer needs your support. Welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking about your brand with Emily Sikorsi, who's the CEO of Root & River. Emily, good chat in the first segment. I want to 
continue the conversation where we uh, left off at the break uh, regarding the idea of branding being a movement. And when we were doing our, our prep call, you had you'd mentioned something called like a repulsion technique. And I remember saying to you, it sounds like a reverse start with why, because when you think about a movement and a mission, it usually starts with why, to, to quote my, my good buddy Simon Sinek. Uh, but <laughs> the repulsion technique is kind of a reverse start with why. Can you talk a little bit about that? And, and how do you create this movement from that lens? Absolutely. So we invite our clients to think differently. One of the ways that we do that is to invite them to think that branding is much more about repulsion than it is about attraction. So that seems completely counterintuitive when I say it. But we are programmed as human beings to be accepted, to be loved. We want to please all of the people all the time. We want everyone coming to our company with their money and their brand ready to go. We want this acceptance. But actually, if you kind of switch that thinking and instead espouse the idea that branding is much more about repelling the people who do what you believe as quickly and efficiently as possible so that they never come into your ecosystem and are a drain of your time, resources, and energy. And I cannot say how often when people hear that, they're, they're very relieved because we've all been in that uncomfortable position of having a client that is one client kind of draining our people, our time, even our money. So with the repulsion technique, we begin to think about speaking from a space of bold, brave tr truth and putting our beliefs out there so that people who don't match up and don't lie do not come in and do not actually even ever contact us. Now, the benefit of that, Dave, is that the people who do come in and do contact us are already aligned with what we believe. So there won't be those awkward moments of, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to step away from this account. There's this amazing synergy that happens from the beginning. And really, as a, as a, as a person who's representing your brand, you never even have to sell because the the people who are contacting you are, are, have already said, hell yes, I'm in. This is the kind of company that I want to work for. And their philosophy really jives with me. Yeah, and that, that's great advice there. Anybody who's listening in, in client service totally understands about that one client. That's the uh, the time suck. Uh, in, in the first segment in your intro, actually, you had mentioned that you work with defiant leaders. What does that mean, Emily? So we work with leaders who we call them defiers. That's sort of our nickname for them. So they are humble. Awesome. They have built a brand and a culture maybe over the last 15, 30 years that has a very healthy, very healthy culture. They are mission driven inherently, and they're also here in the space doing the work that they want to do in order to shift either the industry or the world even. But here's the, here's the catch, Dave. They haven't necessarily fully stepped into that yet. I mentioned mm. that they were humble. So they haven't totally told their story yet, and they'll often say, I really time for us to get our story out there. It's time for us to step into our space and show what we want to do with the world. So they're at this moment where they are taking that defiance or letting it drive a little bit. And that's where we typically enter their story. We meet them because the words, the language, the practice of branding has eluded them to this point. They've tried, they've worked, they worked with their CMO or their director of marketing, try to encapsulate everything that they believe. And it just, it doesn't feel right to them. So we partner with them there. We help them bring all of that to life into language and equip everyone from the business development and the sales team to the inside sales to the frontline workers with that language that they can use every day. Yeah, Emily, can I ask you to, to maybe share a couple of real world examples, maybe of brands that do it really, really well, or maybe juxtapose that with some brands that don't do it quite so well? Sure. I mean, I, I love to point to Southwest Airlines. They, from the very beginning, her Kelleher founded Southwest Airlines based on this idea of love and that was, wasn't just a pretty sentiment he actually his idea was to start this airline that would allow people to travel affordably and would allow you to be there for your grandmother's 90th birthday and up until that point it really low low cost airlines really were not a thing and people were separated and herb i love this story he worked for three years he was a lawyer on his own dime to fight the other airline companies that were not letting him come into the market so he not only was he 
feeling love and wanting to give that to people. He was doing the hard work of love to make his dream a reality. Now that ethic has lived out every day in Southwest Airlines, both internally and externally. And right now, Dave, I, I think it's pretty remarkable that they have committed to having no middle seats through the end of October, I believe it is, in order to put customers put first, put their safety first. That's an example of a brand that is really allowing uh, their beliefs to guide their business and it's it, the, the loyalty that that engenders from the market and the alignment that they're able to then move into momentum, business momentum is huge. And uh, it's really remarkable, I think. Yeah, it's a great example. Folks who are fans of Southwest are, are really devout fans. They're uh, brand evangelists. Yes. In that story that you just shared, it, it just struck me that there's a component of leadership that is, I would say, maybe intrinsic in this whole branding definition. Uh, is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So leaders, our mission at Root & River is to inspire leaders to go inward. We believe that if leaders have developed their inward compass, that their intrinsic knowing, that they will be able to run better businesses, be more efficient, make more profits, build people up at the same time as making the impact that they want to make. And so as a leader, you are the brand. Every time that you step out of your office and you talk to people around you or you, you're on a media parents, you are embodying the values and the beliefs of the brand. And so it's it shouldn't feel like pressure. It does feel like pressure when that brand is imposed on a leader. But when the leader knows, has done that intrinsic work and knows what she or he believes in, and then is able to just express that in a very natural way, that's where you get some amazing synergy. And it, it takes on a whole new level. It goes to that movement level at that point. We have a client, um, Tamara Philippe, CEO of Bridgeway Capital Management, and she practices this intrinsic branding. She just published an open letter and shared her beliefs with the world. And I think it's nothing more powerful in a leader than being able to speak about their beliefs, their mission, and what they're here in the world to do. So that's really the most, the most resonant thing you can do as a leader. Yeah, so in that vein then, jumping off from that point, are there any, we'll call them tips or suggestions that you might have for some folks that are watching and listening as to how maybe they can make an impact today? Yeah, I would begin, as we always do at Root & River, by, by looking inward. So if any of this has appealed to you or stirred your soul a little bit, first of all, set aside some time on your calendar. It will not happen if it is not calendared to really consider what is the thing you're here to do that only you could do. That's our definition of mission. So the thing that you, because of your, your intelligence, your ability, your hard work, your failures, your successes, the thing that you are here in this world to do that only you can do in your particular way. That's a really deep question, but if you dive into it, spend some time journaling, talking to a trusted friend or a spouse about what that is. And, you know, I think it's really important for people to also let go of the idea that they're not special because that's sort of where we all start. Like, mm -hmm. oh, why me? Right. Let go of that idea and just let yourself lean into the idea that maybe you have a purpose. So I would begin there and let that conversation unfold within you or within a trusted circle and see what comes out and know that eventually it will connect to what you are doing. That's another huge stopper for people. They're like, is this my personal thing or is this the business? Yes, it's yes. Best. So let it unfold in its own time. Yeah, and if folks want to continue that conversation with you directly, what's the best yes. way for them to reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Go to the website. We have a form there you can fill out. You can also find me on social media. My handle is at Emily at large, and I would be happy to further the discussion with you. Yep. So when we talk about creating this this evangelism of you, if you will, of the brand, how do leaders get that into the 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 root of the organization, for example. So when you walk into a restaurant or a retail operation, the first person that greets you, the, the person that checks you out or waits on you, for example, they are representing the brand of that establishment. And I think a lot of folks lose sight of that. Um, how can we understand and, and make a better connection with that brand evangelist and the individual employee who may be far removed from the C-suite? I think the word that comes to mind when you ask that, Dave, is inclusion. So the, the boldest leaders are those who include as many people as possible in the formation of the brand. Far too often it seems something that they do in the marketing team or maybe the leader drops in on a meeting. 
Instead, we suggest that the leadership get together and they uncover the brand together. And there's some personal work in that and there's some organizational work. And from there, the brand rollout really begins again internally. And it's not, hey, everyone, this is our new brand. It's not that. It's let's open this discussion about what we're really here to do. And that sort of rolls out in concentric circles into the organization. And people are given a chance to say how that is relevant to them and how they see that playing out. And so it, it's more of an inclusive collaborative process instead of some top-down um, missive that sends in an email, hey, everybody, this is what you're supposed to be doing and saying. And again, if the leader believes and then demonstrates through her behavior that they are bought in, in other words, they make the brand real every day and how they behave, it's going to be much more effective of reaching the frontline employees and encompassing the whole brand experience. Yeah, can I shift gears for just a minute? Um, as an entrepreneur, uh, a lot of the folks who watch and listen are also entrepreneurs or have an entrepreneurial itch and find it always beneficial for a guest to share what I call their journey of entrepreneurship. Would you mind sharing your story? Sure, sure. So first, uh, first off, I, <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I said for sure I never want to own a business. So I knew that like 100%, um, but it's funny how things change. Uh, I started out my career in journalism, and so I love journalism and telling stories along the way. And uh, then I took a step back, and I was really just sort of helping people here and there with all the skills that I had built up over the years. And um, then in 2014, I met my business partner, Justin Foster, and he was doing a bit of brand consulting, and we suddenly had this iron sharpens iron, a connection and this deep conviction that branding was much more, much deeper and much richer than the market had realized. And also sense of injustice that people were really unable to articulate the soul of their brands. They pour their life, their money, their time, their energy into something that they could never quite put words to. And to us, that was, that was an injustice. And so it was that sort of mission, that feeling that really brought us together. And um, a couple of years later, we founded Root and River to help help leaders um, to articulate that and share it with the world. And so I guess my trip to entrepreneurship was really through my passion and my emotion, um, which maybe is unusual or maybe not unusual. But that really got me over the hump of the bigness of being an entrepreneur. And I would say ever since then, I, um, I really advocate for young entrepreneurs to make sure that as you do this, don't think of it as a solo project. Think of it as a collective project and make sure that you have the support you need um, and the people around you to, to be successful in the long term. Thank you. Shifting gears back to branding, we're, as we were broadcasting this and filming this, we're in the, still in the middle of a global pandemic. Uh, so COVID-19 has obviously affected every business everywhere. As your clients are emerging into what the, the new normal may look like, how is COVID currently impacting or will impact them going forward? Great question. Um, a lot of our clients a lot, and what we see in the market at first was like a freeze. So no money nobody really wanted to do anything because there was a lot of fear as far as marketing was concerned there was a lot of fear about doing it wrong and then we've we've seen that sort of freeze thaw a little bit and the way that we encourage people to re-enter or begin the conversation if they haven't really had it is by going to this root system going to your beliefs sharing that with the market and as it turns out given the social unrest uh, the political upheaval around us and also younger generations who are far more likely to connect with brands because of their beliefs. We really encourage people to begin by sharing stories that show their own beliefs inside of their organization. And that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. This is a major shift in the whole philosophy of marketing and branding. And more and more people are beginning to realize that they have to go inward to share their truth in their brand. And that's what consumers are looking for as well. So I would just really encourage anyone who's out there who's listening to think about how you can take this deep dive now when you have a little bit of space to solidify or to uncover those truths, because this is going to be the way that we market, the way that we sell for the foreseeable future date. Yeah, we only have just a couple of moments left here in the program, but just 
piggybacking on that concept, what, what you're talking about is the authenticity, the keeping it real. And it feels like now more than ever, being authentic is absolutely mission critical. And I emphasize mission to your point. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It is mission critical. Consumers today, I was just reading an article about Gen Z as they're entering the workforce. They're around age 25, the oldest of Gen Z. That is one of the vital elements for them, as it was for millennials, but even more so. They want to understand how their business is making a positive impact in the world. And they are willing to quit jobs if they do not see that connection. Um, and I think that today we all need to be looking at why we're doing what we're doing. I think the pandemic has taught us that perhaps what we thought was important before is not so important and that we have power with our choices. And so we, we need to hone in on that mission. Now, is everything gonna perfectly align in your life around that mission? Probably not. But again, as consumers, as people who choose or are choosing to go back to workplaces that may or may not really align with, with what they're doing, there's a lot of people that are going to choose not to do that. So as organizations, we really need to be thinking about, not about pleasing those people or pandering, please don't do that, but think about what you're, what you're really rooted in and how you can express that every day through your brand. Yeah, and thus root and river. Yes. Got it. <laughs> exactly. Great segment and great way to, to wrap this up. Emily, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your insights with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Dave. That's a pleasure. Today we've been talking about your brand with Emily Sikorsi, the CEO of Root & River. I'm Dave Bookbinder. This is Behind the Numbers. Please be sure to leave a comment, leave a review, hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching and listening so you can stay in contact with us and all that we're up to. Until next time, everybody, take care. We'll see you again on Behind the Numbers.